Good morning, everybody. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Megan Twentyman, the BDM for Unified Communications here at Soft Solutions. Um, Karen's actually out sick today, our technical specialist, so she won't be joining our webinar today. The purpose of today's webinar is to share with you what's coming in version 20. So there has been a public blog from 3CX, which I'm sure most of you have read, um, but I also got some other insights when I was in Sydney earlier in the month as well. So I'm going to try and stick to the bite size format. If you have any questions along the way, please pop them into the questions and I will address those at the end of the webinar. Um, and of course, we will end with a Q&A as well. So um, don't hesitate to ask questions, whether it's related to this or anything to do with 3CX. So we will have a quick look at the agenda. Um, so really, it's what do we know so far about what's coming with version 20, a quick update around the 3CX activation server, um, and you know how to keep up to date, and then we'll jump straight into that question and answer section at the end. So what does 3CX have in store for us with version 20? So what I can share um, is that it's 15 years since 3CX burst onto the scene with their new PBX solution. And 15 years ago, everything was on-prem deployments. Generally speaking, it was all Windows deployments because that's all it was built for. Everyone still had a fax machine. Um, I mentioned a fax machine to a colleague the other day. They didn't even know what it was. Um, and very few were even on SIP trunks at that point. It was just a phone system, but it was groundbreaking because it was a new way of licensing and a new way of things to happen. But what that meant was that most things were hard coded um, at the beginning and they've been built on over the last 15 years. Um, and that's how we've got to the product that we have today. But we all have those little niggles like everybody has with any software product. And what 3CX have done with version 20 is they've actually re-architected it from the ground up. So they've rebuilt it. They have taken all the information that they have learnt over the last 15 years. Um, and if you think of some of those key changes, you know, it used to be a Windows install. Now the majority of installs are Linux. Most were on-prem, it's now cloud. We don't see a lot of on-prem anymore. Um, you know, the session border controller became a thing because we required that to connect to the cloud deployments. Um, and fax, what's that? Um, we do actually still have a fax line set up with our system apparently for emails to come in, but I don't think we've had one in the last, you know, five years. Um, you know, for today, 3CX is an omni-channel solution. It is not just a phone system. It's designed for your phone, for your video conferencing, for SMS, for live chat, um, either internally or on your website. Um, it's got the WhatsApp integration. You integrate with your CRMs so that you can see who's calling. So they've rebuilt a system that is designed for now and to carry 3CX into the future. Um, it is an exciting time um, and you know it was great to sit down with um, the ANZ 3CX team while I was in Sydney and just chew their ear about things that I wanted to advocate for our partners. One key thing that has um, come out um, is that there is a focus on larger installations of 3CX. So that 100 to 1,000 seat um, is where a lot of focus will be put. Um, and I think that's exciting. It's exciting for the future of the technology. So what do we know? So it's goodbye to the management console um, and hello admin console. So we've been going through this migration from the management console to the admin console since about update two or three um, in version 18. So with version 20, there will be no management console. Everything moves into the admin console. And for you that have updated to update eight of version 18, you'll notice things like your presence has moved from the left to the right. Um, and that's to allow plenty of room for the admin console menus and that type of stuff. So um, there's a lot that's been going on in version 18 to get us where we're going with version 20. Um, there will no longer be root admin or hosting admin. Um, that is replaced by the system admin or the remote admin. Um, no perpetual licenses will be able to upgrade into version 20. And as I said, everything will be over in the admin console for version 20. 
So another change coming in version 20 is the groups that were introduced um, during, during version 18 will become departments or as Windows Active Directory likes to call them, organisational units. Um, they will have a lot more power in version 20. So all of your office hours, holidays, time zone, language settings will all be set at a department level. They will no longer be set at a SIP trunk level. So that will mean that people need to change the way their office hours are set up when they move up to version 20. Um, also coming soon around that is that each department will have its own phone book. Um, they'll be able to have their own CRM integration. So that was indicated in the previous roadmap that you'll be able to have multi CRMs into one 3CX instance, but it will be limited to one per department. Um, for small customers, they'll just set themselves up as one company department. They don't need to have multi departments if they don't need to. So um, it still gives that flexibility. Um, but it will become a much more powerful feature um, and an important way of setting up the solution moving forward. So they're also changing the URL. Um, obviously for us it'll be the NZ one, but I'm just using the example that they've shared publicly um, here. So they're just making it simpler, um, so it'll be easier to find. Um, with that easy to remember FQDN. Um, users can set their own password or utilize SSO. Um, reliance on that welcome email goes away um, and resetting passwords because people can do forgot password. Um, one thing I will just mention again, and I've been stressing this for quite some time around passwords is that when users are setting their own passwords, it is highly recommended that as partner you're suggesting they use a password management tool um, because if they set their password as ABCD123, um, they will get hacked. So, um, you know, their password is a very, very important and particularly for those people with admin access to the solution. Um, but hopefully from a um, administrator's point of view, having to reset passwords and all those kind of things or resend the welcome email, um, that type of thing will go away. So it should make life a little bit simpler. We've talked about the new native Windows soft phone that is coming. Um, so this is built um, based on the experience with the legacy soft phone that people love. Um, uh, I think I can share this in the public forum. Um, it's like the, the piece of 3CX that just won't go away. 3CX have tried to retire the old soft phone multiple times, um, but people just love it. And in fact, my team love it. So it is something that is here to stay, but it's going to be rebuilt into this new native Windows soft phone. So it'll be similar to what we've got on our mobiles, the Android and iOS, and also the web client. Um, It'll have a proper answer dialog, as you can see. Um, it's going to allow audio control to be independent from the browser, and that's been a challenge with um, the PWA, for example. Um, and there's going to be secure deployment from the Microsoft Store. So each build will be security checked by Microsoft before it's pushed out, um, and that will make life a lot easier. It also means that the desktop app, which is based on the Electron code, will no longer be needed because we'll have this fantastic new native Windows soft phone. Um, I think that's a really important message and it should make it simpler with um, having a tool that does everything that needs to be done. So now to the new core manager or the SIP server. So this is leveraging 15 years and many, many hundreds of thousands of installations knowledge um, to make things better for everybody. So there's a new queue strategy to target busy agents, sort of multi-line strategy, that type of thing. Um, better integration with the queue and what that results in is better performance and better reporting data. So reporting is a really key thing and you'll start to see that coming through as we talk about each of these features features quickly. Um, so there's going to be a new internal API which is going to improve things such as parking, conferencing, those types of things. Um, much better call control, um, so that will reduce things like failed transfers and that type of thing. 
um, transfer back on busy. This has been a problem and is now fully supported in version 20. Um, ring groups, improvements to include an external number, um, so that's um, quite a key thing there. Um, calls via the web client will support more users, so it's less reliant on WebRTC registration, um, and that will allow that better um, use with multiple users. Um, event log improvements, so um, the comments often been made that it's spam and it's unnecessary, um, but they'll just make, well that's with registration refresh and things like that, so they'll make sure that that's much simpler and working well. Um, queues and IVRs will have the group office hours, so that's the departments, so the groups um, with that, so that'll make things a little bit simpler, particularly for people working across multiple time zones or multiple shifts and those types of things as well. Another key thing is the make call service, which is what triggers your call from your desk phone or your smartphone. Um, it's been greatly improved for version 20, so calls will be launched with the correct caller ID, um, it'll work with any device, make call um, appear correctly in the reporting, so there won't be any issues there, it'll support decked phones as well, and the call progress tones can be heard immediately, so it'll be sort of instant. Um, one of the other key things that we should talk about here is reporting has been a bit of a bone of contention, um, and by making all of these changes, um, it will make things so much better for that reporting. Um, one thing that has been frustrating for partners for a long time and is being addressed um, in version 20 is when a call comes in, um, Sally Ann on extension 101 answers that call, she transfers that call to Megan on 102, um, and it, Megan gets a message that there's a call coming from 101, she doesn't get the destination caller ID. So that will travel with version 20 through. So um, that's an exciting thing for us because it's been a bit of a um, problem. So talking more about the reporting, all of those um, improvements in that call manager will bring to the reporting. The reports have been simplified, they've been made more accurate. When version 20 first goes live, um, the next focus will be given on more types of reports, more visual reports. So it'll be a work in progress over updates, um, but it is definitely a focus area that is getting plenty of attention, um, and the rebuild is allowing that all to happen. So we know that reporting is really important to you and your customers, um, and 3CX have taken that on board, so that's fantastic. Debian 12, um, which was just released in June 2023, so only a few months ago, 3CX are going straight to that for version 20. Um, it's got their latest reciprocate engine, latest ver versions of NGINX, and the latest security patches. So they're not mucking around, they're just going straight to the latest one. It also means they're future proofing the install. For existing installs, during the upgrade to version 20, it will be a two-step process. You'll be taken up to version 11 and then to version 12. So um, it won't take long, but it will be a two-step process as part of that upgrade. New APIs, so there's two new APIs that will be published, so there's one for the configuration side, um, which is going to allow things like the creation of users and settings and those types of things, and then there's one on the client or call control side, which will allow access to real-time information about things like user status, call status, will even allow you to control calls. Um, now, they have already said from the outset that those APIs will require experienced development Developers to leverage them, um, and we will get obviously more information as version 20 gets closer. Troubleshooting. This has always been a problem if there's like intermittent issues and those types of things. So they've sort of thought about this and how can they improve troubleshooting and for you being able to support those 3CX instances. So they will give more information from the events information or the events log, um, and with that information, you should be able to fix things more easily. 
So the old activity and Wireshark logs that you were asked for regardless of what the issue was will have less importance. They will still be needed for level three troubleshooting, um, but to be perfectly honest, we don't see a lot of level three troubleshooting um, with 3CX these days. There's also a new feature which is a VoIP quality monitor which can be enabled by a person at their extension level um, that is having an issue. So if there's an intermittent issue, they can turn that on and get the captures and then you as the support agents will be able to help them fix whatever's happening there. It'll kind of diagnose where in the call leg that's actually happening. So, um, you know, that should help with those annoying intermittent issues because um, I had a customer the other day say, look, I had to sneak up on it because it just wouldn't give me the information that I wanted. So there are some requirements and some prerequisites. Um, so on-prem installations will require split DNS. They've been talking about this for a few updates now, and there was actually a new blog published overnight. Um, they have put some more information and updated firewall configuration for a number of brands, um, but have a look at that blog, um, and if you need help, reach out to us as well. So. The purpose of this is that the FQDN must be fully resolvable on the LAN as well as outside of the LAN. Um, it requires um, DNS server or firewall will need to do hairpin NAT. Um, smaller networks may need to consider moving their instance to the cloud. So they may go, this is too hard on our on-prem, and it might be a great opportunity to actually move that across to a cloud instance. You can use the hosted by 3CX or private cloud, whichever you require, but obviously for those smaller instances, it is recommended to use hosted by 3CX. Every install must have a system owner. So we've been talking about this since update six of version 18, um, and it is a requirement now, but it will be absolutely a requirement and critical um, in version 20. And in fact, you won't be able to upgrade without it. You will need to reconfigure global office hours. As I mentioned earlier, it's not going to be at the SIP trunk level, it's going to be at the department level. And perpetual licenses cannot be upgraded to version 20, so they must convert to a subscription um, before the upgrade will be allowed. If you've got perpetual licenses that have still got a while to run before they're due for renewal and when they'll be converted by 3CX to annual subscriptions, we can get those done earlier. You just need to pop a request through to Sebastian um, or send it to me and I can forward it on, but it just needs to have the request from you for that to happen. So what else is on the roadmap? And this is where it starts to get a bit exciting. Um, so there's obviously a lot of things that won't make initial release. You know, they can't get everything in there. But um, or onboard video conference conferencing service um, will allow you to configure your own video conferencing. Um, it will ensure the highest level of confidentiality. Um, so that's, you know, quite a new feature. Warboard and switchboards, um, they're planning an outbound warboard. Um, so at the moment, a lot of people go out to third parties around warboards. Um, you're going to be able to customise those. So um, there's going to be a lot of work put into that, but it'll take a little bit longer to get there. Receptionist view, they're making a special switchboard optimised for faster handling of those inbound calls and that type of stuff. So one of the things that I know has been mentioned um, internally at 3CX is how a lot of people use the legacy soft phone because they love the drag and drop of the receptionist view. I love that feature myself. So, um, you know, watch the space. We'll see what else is coming. Um, they've got group SMS text messaging on the um, roadmap. There's a multi-instance or multi-tenant self-hosted SMB, which will be restricted to um, larger partners, so platinum and titanium partners, gold in some special cases or exceptions. Um, Microsoft Teams integration. So they announced that this was staying um, quite some time ago now and that it would need to be rebuilt. Um, so they are rebuilding it for the re-architect version 20 um, and that will take a little bit of time. But as you already know, they're working very closely with Microsoft using the latest API from update eight onwards um, and also getting that Windows soft phone into the Microsoft store. 
so when well there's no exact dates um, we are anticipating that we will see a preview in October followed by an alpha and a beta in the same month talking to the 3CX team in Sydney they were expecting to have it on their systems very very soon um, if it's not already there so they test on themselves um, as well um, some key considerations on initial launch um, as these features won't be included either is bridges bridging instances together hot desking, cool flow designer apps, oops, spelling error, oh, sorry about that, um, and that Microsoft Teams integration we just talked about. So there will be a period where you will have customers that are not ready to migrate up to version 20 when it eventually goes live, um, and you know we'll keep reiterating these things as it comes to fruition um, with the latest information as well. So that's kind of the key things from version 20. Um, there's been a lot of scrolling through the forums and a lot of listening internally to the 3CX staff who get beaten up by distributors like me um, about the things that we want um, in the solution. So just a couple of other quick updates um, before we open up for Q&A. Um, really important is this 3CX activation server. So on the 11th of September, there was an announcement of an update 8B required to connect to the activation server. Um, there was an SSL certificate issue. Um, we are still waiting for an update from 3CX and they're working with SSL to find out why it happened. Um, so once we get more information, we will share that. Um, now, why is that so important? Um, if you can't connect to the activation server, it can't see that you've renewed a license. So you can come to us, we renew it via the API, um, and as far as we're concerned, it's extended out for another 12 months, but if your system can't connect to the activation server, it can't do that. So it can lock you out of your instance. So we need to ensure that you're not locked out. So um, it is imperative that you get um, your customers up onto update 8B. Um, so so that they can reach the activation server. And as I say, the blog is available on the 3CX website. Uh, just the usual messages about keeping up to date, the technical certifications. So the exams aren't quite available yet. Um, this was a issue they encountered was that the exams, the three exams were hard coded into the partner portal. So they couldn't just delete one, it just didn't work. So there's been a lot of rework in the background um, and that's part of like the re-architecting that they've been doing with the actual physical product as well. Um, and we should see those very, very soon. Um, when I spoke to Nicholas in Sydney, he was adamant that they weren't far away. So um, we'll cross our fingers. I know all the questions are ready, um, but um, we'll get an update as soon as possible. So we do have a channel update coming out tomorrow with a lot of this information um, reiterated in there so that you can get your heads around what's coming in version 20. Um, events, keep an eye on our weekly newsletter. We have some events coming up for Auckland, Hamilton and Tauranga um, in October. So invites are going out for those and the first information will be in my newsletter tomorrow. Um, obviously we're posting to the LinkedIn Soft Solutions community group. If you're not part of that, please let me know. I can get you joined up to that. Um, so I've already shared information. You know, my job is to go and find the information and share it with you. Um, we can't expect our partners to be checking 3CX's blog and forum every morning, but we do because we need to get that information for you. And thank you for joining us today. Um, I hope that's given you some insights. You know, talking with the team from 3CX, everybody's really pumped and excited about what is coming. Um, and, you know, I think it's um, an exciting time to be a 3CX partner as that future loads up with my little image there. Um, so let me just jump into the questions and see what I can answer from what I know so far. Uh, hot desking, yes, everything's moving across to the admin console. So anything that's still remaining in the management console for version 18 will move over to the admin console for version 20. But as you heard just a moment ago, hot desking is one of those features that is actually going to be in a point update. Um, whether that'll be update one, two or three, I can't tell you at this point, but we will get more information and we'll make sure that we list that information out before anybody starts upgrading their clients to version 20 because as I said, there'll be some clients that you will hold back from updating because they use a specific feature. 
um, with departments having their own holidays, will there be a way to import and export the holidays? Don't know yet, Trevor. I haven't seen inside version 20. Um, I was hoping that Nicholas would have had version 20 um, in Australia, but he didn't. He just had some screenshots, um, more screenshots that have been made available publicly for their VIP event. Um, but we will get more information because the departments are becoming that you know really critical part of it. So as more is published, um, like the blog that was published last night about the um, split DNS is part one of preparing for version 20. So there's going to be a series of blogs about preparing and being ready for version 20. So we'll see what more information comes out around that. Um, will the way abandoned calls are reported be accurate? Ah, okay, so this is the famous, the minute it leaves the queue um, and circles round, it's treated as an abandoned call even though it's actually just exiting. We know that that has been raised as a major issue. Um, we have raised it, other distributors have raised it, customers have raised it. Um, so I believe that is one of the issues that has been looked at, um, whether it will make it into the first cut. Um, I can't answer that. Um, but um, we definitely know that that is an issue. In fact, I had that conversation oh, while I was in Sydney with Nicholas and he just kind of put his ha head in his hands and said, I know. Um, so, um, and as you know, Nicholas has been the global trainer at 3CX for over 10 years now. So um, that's the key thing there. Uh, group voicemail, no indication of group voicemail coming. Um, it's definitely something that's asked for in the forums, but it's not a question I specifically asked around that, but I'll keep an eye on what comes out and see if we get an update around that. Um, what will happen to on-site Windows? I assume you mean Windows installations. As long as you have split DNS, it will just continue. They're still developing the product for both Windows and Linux. Um, it's just that the majority of, of partners deploy on Linux these days. Um, but being on-site, on-prem, you will need the split DNS. So um, check what um, firewall router you've got. Um, and if you need help, um, reach out to us. They have updated um, the firewall configuration guides for Fortinet, WatchGuard, and there were two others, and I can't remember, sorry, I read that blog this morning, um, but just come to us and we'll see what we can do um, to help you there. Uh, so CoreFlow designer apps will not be supported in the initial launch of version 20. They will come in a point update. So they just need to make sure that that CoreFlow designer is working. And as I mentioned, we will keep you updated with those things that you need to consider before you move customers up to um, version 20. So there will be a bit of a transitional period once version 20 goes live. But we've obviously got to get through the preview alpha beta and release yet. Um, Will we be able to deploy the phone out app without the store as we have it blocked for obvious reasons? The Windows soft phone will only be available for download from the Microsoft store. That is going to be the only way to access it because um, Microsoft will be running it through those additional security checks and that kind of stuff as well. So the whole point of that is to give um, partners and customers much more reassurance um, that um, you know, these things are secure. You know, 3CX since the incident on the 30th of March, um, obviously worked with Mandiant to remediate it. They're working with CrowdStrike. They've rebuilt their entire networks, that kind of stuff. So security is top of game. And I'd say their product um, is one of the most secure out there. And these days, when you talk about security of product, you don't talk about if they're being hacked, you talk about when they'll be hacked and it's how they deal with it. And, you know, we believe that 3CX dealt with it um, in the best way that could possibly happen. Um, will AWS instances automatically update to Debian 12? Um, well, so the Debian 12 update is part of the upgrade of version 20. We don't have any documentation on that yet, Ian, but once we do, um, obviously we will share that out and it'll be part of the consideration. This is not an update that you're going to rush into upgrading. Um, there's going to be a bit of work to um, work on that. Is stun still an option? Nope, it is time to retire stun. Um, so stun is been widely spoken about going away. SBC is the way to go. Um, with the router phones, with the SBC on board, um, there's really no requirement for stun any longer. Um, whilst it's still working in version 18, I don't believe 
at this point it will be carried into version 20, but I don't know 100% for sure. But Nicholas Perez has been saying on every webinar, every training for quite some time to move away from STUN. So um, definitely um, that's on its way out. Um, you can use Intune to deploy Windows Store app if needed. Um, I believe that will be supported, Trevor, yes. Um, with regards to the call flow apps, Uh, the answer to that, Michael, is I don't know. So the question is, if you update them into version 20, will they stop working? Um, what I do know is they have said that um, the apps won't be supported in the first release of version 20. Um, and that was the same from when we went from version 16 to version 18. And at that time, the recommendation was to stay on version 16 until we got to, I think it was update two, I can't remember, there's been so much happen with the updates. Um, and then they said it's good to update from there. So that one, if you've got people using the CoolFlow apps, wait, pause, and let's see what the documentation says, and then we'll go from there. So we will keep you updated because, you know, we don't want people to rush into upgrading their customers and go, oops, I mucked that up, I need a gotcha, that kind of thing. So we'll be highlighting all those gotchas. And that's why I wanted to really kind of break this down now to get people thinking um, before we see the preview and the alpha and the beta. Obviously, you're going to test it internally yourselves. Um, it's got a bit of a fresh new user interface, so it looks pretty good from the images that I've seen. And, uh, you know, I got to sit and chew the ears of uh, Sebastian and Nicholas. Um, Nicholas's role is with the sales team now. So whilst he's the global trainer, has been 10 years, that's his core role. He's also available to help with pre-sales and bits and pieces as well. So if you have sort of some complicated stuff coming up, um, flick that through to me. You all know I'm not the technical resource, but flick that through to me. And I can get Sebastian and um, Nicholas involved if we need to. You know, 3CX is a team of 122 people. They need their partners and distributors to help them, but they also want to help with these kind of more unusual situations that come up at times as well. All right, I don't think there's any more questions. I'll give everybody a second in case anybody's got anything else burning. I think I've got through all of them, but if you have any questions after this, you're welcome as always to send those through to me um, and I will endeavour to get you the answers. Um, you know, at the moment we are basing this on the information that I've seen at the VIP event, the publicly released blog, and the blogs that are starting to now be released with the preparation for version 20. So, um, you know, it's an exciting time. Um, I think it's, um, you know, a really exciting time to see um, kind of like a major upgrade and that type of thing. Do you know if Yalink decked bases will get SBCs built in? I asked that question quite a while ago, Graham. The answer was no. Um, they don't have the power um, to run the SBC off that. So the only way will be um, connecting via another SBC device. Um, for Yalink, you do realise that the T4U range can now run the router um, SBC firmware um, as well. So you could even just put one of them in and then connect the deck to via that. So um, I don't think that will come, but who knows what the future holds. So um, you know, part of it is having the power to process everything. So um, yeah. All right, I'll give everybody a couple more seconds. Okay, it looks like that might be the end of the questions, but as I said, just reach out if you'd like to ask me any more questions. This recording will be shared um, with you, and I really thank you all for your time today. Um, time is precious, but there was a lot of information to get through. So thank you, everybody, and have a great rest of your Tuesday, um, and don't hesitate to get in touch if you need to get some queries answered. Have a great day. <laughs>